Welcome to the Reddit Chronicles. Today we will be reading from Am I the Jerk? Our first post is by Mortgage Trick. Am I the jerk for telling my daughter-in-law she wasn't invited since she is an embarrassment at dinners, since she is a picky eater? My son's on my butt so I am writing here for different opinions. My son has been married for two years at this point, we get along as well as water and oil. I just keep my distance because I don't like dealing with her. She is a horrible picky eater. I don't know why, but truly I don't care because she is a pain at restaurants. We try to go anywhere, and we have to change places multiple times so she can have something to eat. She makes the waiters go through hoops so she will have something she likes, and if anything is wrong she will moan about it or pout in the corner. Example, she got a quesadilla, removed everything on it, and when it came out she sent it back because there was sour cream on the side, it wasn't touching anything, and she made a huge deal about her food being wrong. She doesn't have allergies either. What really made me dislike her is that she complained about the food at a funeral, they had a sandwich spread, but went on about how it's gross multiple times, so I had a dinner yesterday, and I invited everyone but my son's wife. Son wasn't invited either but he was on a business trip. My other daughter-in-law posted it online, and I got a call from daughter-in-law. She was pissed I didn't invite her and asked why, I told her it's due to her being an embarrassment at dinners, and I won't be inviting her to dinners. She called me a jerk, and hung up. Now my son is on my butt, and I am wondering if I should apologize or not. Edit. I'm going to say it, it doesn't matter if she has an eating disorder or is on the spectrum. Both those group know how to act at a funeral or restaurant. It may be harder but they can. Edit too. So to make it clearer, I have three daughter-in-law and one sister-in-law. We all have a good relationship besides this one daughter-in-law. It's not me that's itchy issue here. They don't like her as they're also, I find the threat of I better bend down to her or I won't see her kids such a stupid threat. I'm already a grandma, and if she withholds her kids, then that's on them and would be depriving the kids of grandparents on my son's side. Our next post is social media police. Am I the jerk for nuking my niece's social media accounts? So, a couple of weeks ago, I am 35, had my sister F39 and her family, including niece F11, over for a barbecue. We had a pretty good time, with the exception of niece who was pretty much constantly on her phone recording TikToks. Slightly annoying, but ultimately not my kid, not my problem. I've talked to my sister a while ago about being careful what niece is putting online, protecting her identity, etc. My sister brushed it off, saying that niece was sensible enough not to do anything stupid. I figure I'd try and bridge the gap so I ask niece what she's recording, it's a TikTok, you're old, you wouldn't get it. I work in tech, so it's not like I don't know what I'm talking about, but I decide to let it slide and do some digging later. Turns out niece has used her full government name to register for TikTok, with links to her public Instagram with the same name. So I did what any reasonable person would do, reported everything for being under 13. Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, everything I could find. With the nature of TikTok trends, some of the stuff on there was stuff that 11-year-olds probably shouldn't be doing and definitely shouldn't be recording. Fast forward to today. Sister calls me and asks me if I can have a look at niece's iPad. Apparently she can't log into any of her accounts and she's having a meltdown about it. I talk her through it and it quickly becomes apparent that the accounts are blocked and asking for ID. I'm in two minds whether to tell her it was me that reported the account or just tell her to submit the ID knowing it'll get niece perma banned. So, am I the jerk for nuking my niece's social media? Edit. Thanks for your advice. Seems like most people are with me on this. I'm not going to tell her it was me. I'm assuming she'll probably create new accounts, and if those come up I'll speak to her mom. There were a couple of bits a few people mentioned, so I'll add them here rather than copy-paste a load. You banned her government name, she'll just use a pseudonym. Good. It's one less thing people can use to track her down and one less thing someone can hold over her if something goes wrong. 
I'm not stupid enough to think this will stop her, but maybe she'll start to understand that she needs to be smarter about it. She's not your kid to parent, you should have spoken to her mom about it, true. And one of the reasons why I questioned if I would be the jerk, my sister is great in many ways, but tech isn't one of them, I tried it the reasonable way. I probably overstepped, but I don't think removing someone from a dangerous situation is a problem. You're invading her privacy, she's 11. Posting stuff publicly under her government name. If you think any of that constitutes privacy, I don't know what to tell you. Our next post is by one theme. Am I the jerk for showing up at my sister's party after her miscarriage despite knowing that I couldn't drink and people would suspect I was pregnant? My name is Kayla and I'm 22F. My sister Leah, who is 25, unexpectedly had a miscarriage a week ago. I felt especially guilty because I recently had found out I was pregnant as well, but had opted to wait to tell anyone. I felt guilty, so I elected to keep quiet about it for as long as I could, as I didn't want to take any attention away from her grief or cause her any pain. This became a problem when my family arranged a little get-together at her place to help her feel better, where alcohol was to be involved. The night was going fine, and my sister really seemed to be smiling and enjoying herself. I was staying away from the beer and vodka, kinda shutting down the strange looks from my family friends, who know I almost never turn down the opportunity to drink. Most were believing my lies except my sister's friend Ash, who came up to me and asked, are you pregnant or something, why aren't you drinking? I laughed and said I had to watch out for my health and, trying to change the subject, my sister saw us talking however and came up with a shot in her hand. She basically said that she was really glad I was here and wanted to take a shot with me. I had a feeling that Ash had told her I wasn't drinking and had come to confirm her suspicions. I turned her down and said that I was just happy to be in the moment with her. Leah got this teary look on her face and kinda eyed my stomach. She set the drink down and asked me slowly if I was pregnant and trying to hide it. I froze in the moment, which must have basically confirmed what she was suspecting. She burst into tears and asked again, much louder this time, which caused most of the people in her apartment to look at us. She told me to either drink the shot or tell her the truth. I wasn't sure what to do so I opted to just tell her the truth. I tried to tell her that I didn't really want to take any attention away from her pain, but she wasn't listening. She started accusing me of coming to her apartment to boast about my pregnancy and how I always got what I wanted. She also said that shouldn't have come to the party knowing that I couldn't drink and that I obviously knew that people were going to know I was pregnant. Basically going on about how I was attention seeking. At this point, our dad stepped in to calm her down cause she was belligerent at this point. At that point me and my boyfriend decided it was better for us to just leave. I even got a few quiet congrats, which I felt awful about. She's not really talking to me right now, which I kind of understand, but at the same time, all I really wanted was to be there for her. People are more so leaning in her side because she's going through a hard time right now, but I feel like I'm not being listened to. My mom told me that she understands, but that it was wrong of me to come knowing I was pregnant. Edit. I know you guys may find it strange we partied after her miscarriage so soon, that's just how my family is, we drink and get together after funerals too, we aren't really the type to mope around in our feels, we like to be together and have fun as family when things are hard. I know that may be different for most of y'all. Our next post is by Child Abandonment. Am I the jerk for saying I will call social services if my sister-in-law keeps leaving her child at my place? I, 30F, have a half-brother, Enzo, 40M. We're not very close since we were both raised with our respective mothers, but he has always gone out of his way to help me with anything I've needed. Enzo married his wife, Steph, 33F, two years ago. Steph has a daughter, Alice, 4, with her ex but has sole custody and Enzo and Steph have a 7-month son Teddy. I also have a 3-year-old daughter. Enzo and Steph moved to the city I live in when Steph got pregnant, and since then, 
Steph developed a habit of showing up at my apartment building unannounced, it became a problem, and I talked to both her and Enzo about it, and she stopped, until she gave birth. Now as she regularly drops by unannounced to leave Alice at my building for babysitting while she has to run errands or something. She's had her carpool drop Alice off at my apartment before. My poor housekeeper is a wonderful woman who has had to deal with Alice arriving unexpectedly while I'm out, and I feel terrible about it. I've told the concierge not to let her up, and to say no one is in, but then I'll arrive to Alice waiting in the lobby which is not safe, and the concierge has told me I can't make them responsible for a child. Steph keeps saying she only does it when she's desperate, but I don't see how she can be that desperate to run errands at least twice a week, and frankly, I'm not a nanny if she's desperate she needs to hire some help. I've spoken to Enzo, and he is always extremely apologetic and says he will talk to her, and I believe he does, but he also works during the day and can't police where she is at all hours. I reached my breaking point a couple of days ago when I returned from lunch to find Alice at home, having been dropped off since she had a half day at school. I apologized profusely to my housekeeper who had spent time playing babysitter and called Steph, no answer. I called her several times, and then Enzo, who was on a business trip, and distraught over the situation. Steph eventually turned up a couple of hours later, and I went ballistic. I said, if she ever leaves Alice at my building again, I will call social services, and I will call them every single time she drops Alice off with me, until they do something, because this is not my job, and she is an irresponsible and neglectful parent. She burst into tears and begged me to help out with Alice but I said no, and reminded her I'd never said yes in the first place, she just kept dumping her kid here. Steph kept trying to guilt trip me, but I was too exhausted and upset about the situation to be receptive, and eventually my husband had to tell her to leave. I feel bad because as I said, Enzo has never been anything but the most accommodating person where I'm concerned, and maybe treating his wife like that was harsh, but at the same time, I chose to have one kid, because I don't want another one. Steph can't use my house as a daycare. Was I too harsh? Thank you for listening to the Reddit Chronicles. Follow for more content.